So we're going to titrate our buffer solution with our base, which is sodium hydroxide, and this is a strong base. So in order for us to do that, what I did after I made up my, um, my, my acetate buffer solution, I put 125 mils of it into a 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask. So the first thing to do is to measure the pH before we start any titration. Measure the initial pH after you have made the buffer. So this would be at the volume of zero because we have not added any acid yet. So, I mean, any base yet. So we have to put that initial pH when no base is added. So we measure this pH and notice I, in order for me to get into the early in my flask and measure the pH of my solution correctly while it's mixing, I have to detach the electrode from the pH meter stand and immerse it enough into the liquid, into the buffer, and make sure that it is not in the path of this, the stir bar. So I look at my pH reading and it's saying it's 4.74. So that's my initial pH reading. So I make sure I document that initial pH of buffer. And that is 4.74. And then I'm going to titrate with my base. So what I do here is record the initial reading on my burette, which is 15 mils. So that will be able to give me an idea of how much sodium hydroxide I'm adding each time. So initial burette reading is 15 mils. And what I'm going to start out by doing is to add 0.5 mils each time. So I will add 0.5 mils first and then I'm going to mix it on my stirrer, and then I'm going to record the pH each time I add 0.5 mils. So when I add 0.5 mils, my burette should go, the volume in the burette should go to 15.5, and then I'm going to stir on my stir plate, and then I'm going to record the pH while it's being stirred. So the pH did not go up by much, which is expected since it's a buffer. So it, the pH is actually 4.77. So after I add five, 0 0.5 mils of base, it's now 4.77. So I do this again just to show you for illustration purposes. I go again and I add 0.5 mils of sodium hydroxide. So I wait until the burette reading is 16. Then I mix and then I record the pH. And this is the pH after we've added one mil of sodium hydroxide. And when the pH reading has stabilized, it's saying it's actually 4.81. So it's going up a little bit, not by a drastic amount. And this will continue to go up gradually, gradually, gradually until you get to a point where the buffer no longer functions like a normal buffer. If you should add a small amount of sodium hydroxide, the pH reading is going to spike. It's going to move from probably about 7 and spike up to almost 10. So in order for you to do this, you have to make sure that you're careful in only adding a small amount of sodium hydroxide at a time because you could miss the point where it actually spikes from when it was a lower range up to a, a higher range. So as I continue, I will go on to the point where I get to 
almost when, when it's outside of the buffer range. So the buffer range for ac acet the acetate buffer is 3.8 to 5.8. So when I get to the 5.8 mark, I'm going to lower the amount of sodium hydroxide that I add. So instead of adding 0.5 at that stage, I may add probably 0.2. And the closer I get to about 6, then I go to just a drop at a time, a drop at a time. Make sure you record the volume each time you do it. Make sure you record the pH, and that will give you enough points, enough data points in order to make a curve. So that is basically how you collect the data in order to get your titration curve for your base.